Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about the existence and nature of God. Now, because God is infinite and we're not, we can't ever come to a full understanding of his nature, but we can at least learn a few things about it. Today, is God perfect? Some people think that God may not be perfect because a perfect thing fulfills its purpose perfectly. But God isn't a created thing and therefore wasn't given a purpose by any creator. However, the word perfect only means needing nothing further. If God doesn't need anything further, then he is perfect, regardless of whether that lack of need conforms to some intended goal or not. Some say that merely creating the universe proves that God is needy and therefore imperfect, but it doesn't really prove that. God could have created the universe purely for the benefit of its inhabitants, with no intention of gaining any advantage in doing so. Some people claim that God is morally imperfect because he is often described in the scriptures and other places as doing or allowing things which go against the standards of morality as we usually think of them. However, this isn't proof that God is imperfect for several reasons. First, because for all we know, some or all of those accounts might be incorrect or misunderstood versions of what really happened. Secondly, because being the source of all morality, with free will, God grants moral rights to us only by relation to himself. If, due to a series of grave sins, or for the purpose of saving more people, God should decide to remove some of those rights, which he did not owe to us, but which were a generous gift, he is well within his rights to do that. Thirdly, the reason why taking some good things away from a person is wrong is that that property doesn't belong to us, but to the person we take it from. However, everything ultimately belongs to God, including all human beings. So, if he should decide to remove good things from us, even our very lives, it's still not an immoral act. He's well within his rights to do that. We only have a right to the things we own because God allows us that right. Finally, in order to determine that something is imperfect, we first need to know that it is different from perfection. But apart from God, we have no standard of moral perfection to use as a measuring stick for judgments like that. Therefore, we can never be justified in judging that God is morally imperfect. In fact, we can have good reasons to think that God is perfect in a number of ways. According to the moral argument, God explains how moral values can be objective by serving as a sufficient basis for them. However, the basis of moral values would be perfectly moral. God's knowledge is known to be perfect because he's timeless, and therefore sees all the truth of reality at once, which nobody else can do. His power is known to be perfect due to his ability to cause the universe to exist from nothing. An infinite power would be required to cause an infinite change, such as, for example, crossing an infinite amount of space. However, there is an infinite difference between existence and absolute non-existence. Therefore, in order to create the universe from nothing, it is necessary for the power of God to be infinite and therefore perfect. We know God is perfect in all of these ways through logic and reason. But what about other kinds of perfection? What about the perfections of things like golf and tea and blackjack? Next, are the perfections of other things present in God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.